Christian for over 28 years talking about things that matter with people who care. Production of McQuistian is made possible in part by individual viewers, supporters of the Foundation for Responsible Television, the Hatton W. Sumner's Foundation, helping to educate the public about the fundamental principles of their democracy and thus be in a position to help formulate public policy. Moss Adams LLP, certified public accountants and consultants, providing industry smart tax, assurance and consulting solutions to help businesses and their owners succeed since 1913. The University of Texas at Dallas, creating the future. In the previous program, we looked at the causes and the size of gun violence in America. I'd like to tell you that the problem with gun violence is lessening, but that's not the case. And because the situation is getting worse, there is even more reason to search for solutions. Now, on this program, we'll look at what's possible, what's being tried, and yes, we'll examine the Second Amendment as well, so let's meet the panel. First, joining us from Washington, D.C. via Skype is Stephen Holbrook. He's a senior fellow at the Independent Institute. He's a lawyer known for his litigation on behalf of the NRA and an author whose latest book is Gun Control in Nazi-Occupied France. Steve, welcome to the program. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you for having me. Glad Good. to be here. We'll be right back with you. And here in the studio, Vika Chaplin is the director of public health programs at the Educational Fund to Stop Gun Violence. They're a firearms policy think tank where she works to develop, advocate for, and implement evidence-based firearms policies and programs. She holds master's degree in public health and counseling psychology and applies a risk-based approach to gun violence prevention. Vika, welcome back to the program. Thank you so much for having me, Dennis. Sitting next to you is Wes Magruder. He's senior pastor at the Kessler Park United Methodist Church in Dallas, having previously served in Great Britain and Cameroon. He also serves as president of the Board of Refugee Services of Texas. Wes, welcome to the program. Thanks. Happy to be here. And finally, last but not least on the end is Sheila Madigan Levitino. She's a retired marriage and family therapist and trained spiritual director. She spent nine and a half years as a hospital chaplain and has served the Parkland Hospital Ethics Committee for almost 30 years. And finally, she's advisory board member of Texas Gun Sense. So let me just start, Sheila, by telling that, telling you to add, tell that viewer what Texas Gun Sense is. Texas Gun Sense is a policy making and advocacy group based in Austin, Texas. And they police the legislature, they let people know in the state of Texas what's coming up before the legislature, they do research, they formulate policy, and they try to get people to learn more about reasonable uh, evidence-based solutions to gun violence and gun reform, not control. Okay. In the state now, of Texas. one of the things I found that, and the website is what? Do you remember what the website? Texas Gun Sense. Texas Gun Sense. And it's one word. Texas Gun Sense, mm -hmm. one word, dot org or dot net dot or org. Dot, dot org. org. All right, now let me just say to that person watching that you have a lot of great information there, a lot of statistics, uh, cases where people are getting shot and the thing. I mean, that's not easy to read, but it's important, let's put it that way. Now, give us a couple of solutions that you think are appropriate from a public policy standpoint today. Two solutions that I think are crucial gun locks. Every gun that's sold ought to have a gun lock sold with it. That's one thing. Second thing, I think they ought to raise the ability to purchase firearms from 18 to 21 years old. Those are two solutions I offer. Okay, good. Gun locks at 18 to 21. Now, Wes, we had something here in Dallas last weekend, a little convention that had no controversy <laughs> attached to it. Uh, something like the NRA or something like that was here. Yes. Uh, tell us about your experiences there. Yes, well, I'm a part of Faith Forward Dallas which is an interfaith organization here centered around Thanksgiving Square in, the, in downtown Dallas. And we decided that our response to the NRA uh, coming to town would be to host a prayer vigil. And so we had a prayer vigil lasting the length of the convention. Um, I also went ahead and joined the NRA so that I could get in and attend some of the workshops and meet people. And uh, what I learned is that uh, talking about any sort of gun regulations or restrictions is almost a non-starter. Uh, with the average NRA member, uh, much less the membership. Um, there is a universal sense that 
any gun restriction, any kind of restriction on any kind of gun uh, is the first step on a slippery slope to uh, eventually confiscating all guns from all owners. So I found it was very difficult to have a, any conversation about any beginnings of any evidence-based or common sense um, laws. So it, it was difficult, and I think that's fostered by the leadership uh, really on purpose. Right. Now, do you have a couple of things that you would recommend yourself based upon yes, what you uh, do? Faith Forward Dallas uh, recommends three things. Uh, first, we, uh, we support universal background checks on all um, gun purchases, uh, closing the so-called gun show loophole. Uh, second of all, we, we support funding for the CDC, Centers for Disease Control, to be able to research uh, do the necessary research on gun purchase, uh, on the, the, co the causes and the consequences of gun violence, uh, which has been restricted by the Dickey Amendment passed in 1996. Uh, and then finally, we do, we do want to see banning of bump stocks and of uh, things that, that permit weapons to fire more than one round with a single uh, pull of the trigger. All right, good. Now, uh, Vika, you guys are all about the research into these things, obviously. You have heard the recommendations that they make, and I, he mentioned the Dickey Amendment. So tell us a little bit more about that and what they're trying to do in terms of get funding for CDC, and then tell us whether or not the government is in fact doing research into gun violence. Absolutely, sure. So the Dickey Amendment, um, from the 90s, they decided Congress decided to tell the CDC that they could not research the, the causes and the prevention, or I'm sorry, let me take a step back. What they said was that you can research causes, but you cannot advocate for gun control. And what that did was have a chilling effect on gun violence prevention research of all kinds. It was paired with a reduction in the budget by exactly the CDC's gun violence prevention research budget from the year prior. So that combination really told researchers that the CDC could not spend any money or attention on gun violence and its causes and prevention. So today, we are having a lot of debate about that Dickey Amendment. Um, we know that uh, we need good data in order to better understand the problem and then to better understand solutions. So in March, in the appropriations bill, there was some language change that said the CDC can um, research the causes of gun violence, but we haven't seen funding attached to that. And until we see funding attached to that, we're not going to see the research happening. I believe that. But are there other agencies in the government doing research that you guys tag on to or what? There is research that has been happening. It's smaller and it, uh, than what it should be, uh, but there are agencies that have been able to do some research into gun violence. And I think that's really important because it is a, a misnomer to say that we don't know anything. It's easy to say the Dickey Amendment just squelched all gun violence research, but we have dedicated researchers across the country who have spent their careers looking at gun violence causes and solutions, and so we do know that there are evidence-based solutions. All right, so obviously on that program we did on causes, we talked about some of the causes, but uh, do you agree with their solutions and do you have other solutions you'd like to add to my growing list here? Absolutely. And I think we need to be smart about what kinds of laws that